Hey Booktube, it's Jackie. How's it going? If you're new to me and this is the first time you're seeing my face, hello, what's up? My name's Jackie. I sit on my floor and I talk about books. So I hope that's why you're here because that's what's going to be happening. If you're not new to me, thank you for always tuning in the continued support. I really do appreciate it. So as you can see from the day's title of video, I have a book tag for you. I was not tagged in this. I just wanted to do something really fun for Halloween. Last year, I did a smut reading vlog of a Halloween monster erotica. Um, I'll actually link it here for you guys so you can go check it out if you are into that or you just want to kind of see me react to pumpkin spice flavored ejaculate. Yeah, it's a thing. Go check it out. Uh, I decided to do something a little different and not uh, do a repeat. So I decided to find a book tag. So I literally scoured the internet. I didn't really scour. I mean, I looked for like a grand total of like maybe 25 minutes. And then I found this old tag, um, the spooky book tag. So I decided to do this one for you guys. Um, Halloween's one of my favorite holidays. I actually got married on Halloween. It's one of my, it was so much of my favorite holiday that I chose to get married on it. So this one is near and dear to my heart. So if you'd like to find out what my answers to these spooky related book questions are, grab yourself a drink, have yourself a seat, and let's get spooky with some books. Okay, so there are 13 questions to this tag. I do not know who originally created this tag. I didn't take the time to sit there and actually go hunt it down. I literally just typed in Halloween related book tags and there was a list that came up and this was the one that appealed to me that I felt kind of worked for the books that I was thinking of and I thought would have the best answers for myself. So thumbs, two thumbs way, way up. So we're just going to go through it. And if you like to do this tag, you are more than welcome to because even though Halloween, if you're watching this, um, probably is over. Um, if you're like me, the spooky never goes away. So feel free to do this at any point in time that you like because I'm not gonna judge. There's no judging here. I got married on fucking Halloween, guys. I live Halloween. Okay, thanks. All right, so the first one, the first question is, well, word is corn maze. And this is a, what book had you confused from, confused and lost from the very beginning? Um, so here's my thing with this question. Um, I tend to love books that keep me lost and confused and then give me some kind of resolution at the end because I like mazes. I like puzzles. I'm definitely that kid who always did the mazes. I liked corn mazes growing up. Um, I mean, <laughs> there's literally a cornfield behind my house. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I enjoy these kind of things. So these books weren't Yes, they were confusing, but I wasn't ever actually lost because I chose to be there. Um, so I picked a book that had me lost as to why it was so popular because I I was confused that so many people could find this enrapturing and amazing. And that's Twilight by Steffi Meyer. Okay, so long story short, I read this book after the first film came out. I did not read these um, when they first initially came out, I read the first book after the first movie and I was at a loss as to why this was popular. I, I did not understand why. Um, I just, I didn't, maybe I didn't get the book at the right time. I don't know, but the whole hype around these books had me confused. The whole hype around these movies had me confused. However, with that being said, these movies are a guilty pleasure of mine. Absolutely. Me and my daughter will sit there and marathon all of these. Well, almost all of them. We, we tend to exclude the first one because that one just sucks, which happens to be this book. Um, it, it just, just it's, mm. how long have you been 17? say it, but I, I can't. It's the cheese factor is just lost on me. I can't. And that wig, what the fuck? That wig should be sued and burned. I just, I can't. But anyway, about the book, because it's not about the movie, but the, but the movies are guilty pleasure of mine. The books, however, I still, I have now, I am 37 years old and I have read every single book in this series, including Midnight Sun that came out um, just a few years ago. 
and I still don't really understand the hype. I'm still confused about the hype of these books. I don't... You chose the wrong fucking one! Okay? Team... No! Team Jacob, dude. Team... No! No! And then he imprinted on her... It's just confusing why they're still popular. And they're... They, they, I, 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 mm, mm. Yeah. Confused. I'm lost in a corn maze. And this is a maze I want the fuck out of. Okay? I do. Now I'm gonna have to go watch fucking Twilight. Lizzie, you were watching Twilight. All right. Next question. Haunted House. What book has the creepiest setting? Um, so I don't read a lot of horror. I mean, I love, I like horror. Don't get me wrong. I like it, but I don't generally read a lot of it. Um, I would not say that horror is one of my main genres that I pick. So a, this question for me was kind of, what do I deem creepy? Like, seriously, you're talking to somebody who likes macabre, who likes dark things, who, if, could afford the lifestyle, would dress in Victorian Gothic fashion and style their house like that 24-7. I mean, Kat Von D's house is amazing. Have you seen that bitch's house? That's my dream house, okay? Like, legit. I, I love that aesthetic. I love that dark Transylvanian fog appeal. I fucking love that shit. So for me, what is actually creepy? Well, there, I do have some creep factors. And... That's real baddies, real villains, not fictional villains, not movie villains, not movie slash. I'm talking about the real deal. The person that you look at that you don't suspect and they've got someone locked in their fucking house, which is why the answer to this question is Finding Me, A Life Reclaimed by Michelle Knight. I have a full book review on this book. I'll link it here. This is her story of her time being a captive for 11 years in an attic by Ariel Castro. Fucking douchebag. Um, this is a true story that happened in Ohio while I was in high school. This girl had 11 years of her life taken away and she was chained to a wall in a fucking room, forced to have multiple, multiple abortions. And then on top of that, two other girls were held captive along with her shortly after. And they were allowed to bear a child. Yeah, so the creepy setting for me is real life creeps and real life scenarios. This actually happened, this house, I don't know if the house is still actually standing. I haven't looked into it. I don't know if it actually is or not, but, um. It was in Ohio. Like, it, there was people living next door. This guy had a daughter that came in and out of the house on a regular basis and didn't know that this bitch was upstairs literally fighting for her life. So this is the creepiest setting I've ever had in a book because it's fucking real. It's legit. It actually exists. So yes, it's by far the creepiest setting that I've read in quite a while. So, fucking great book though. I will admit though, it's not written the best because Michelle Knight, um, she was, she didn't have the best education. So there is, if you're looking for some kind of gram grammatical and um, clear cut writing and like prose, you're not going to get that. She's just telling a straight story, but it is moving. It is scary as fuck and it is empowering that she survived. It's a great survival story, um, but definitely a hard one to read. And creepy as fuck. So. All right. Question number three. Ghost boyfriend. Who is your eternal book boyfriend? Well, if you've been following my channel at all, you automatically know this answer. It's Jamie Frazier from Outlander. Okay. I, I, I do not know how many more times I can brag about Jamie Frazier. It's Jamie fucking Frazier. Okay. He's the king of men for fucking reasons, people. Reasons. And one of them is because he's perfect. Thank you. Jamie Frazier. He is my forever eternal book boyfriend. Always. There was a pre-Outlander Jackie and an after-Outlander Jackie. And the after-Outlander Jackie is far cooler than the pre-Outlander Jackie because Jamie fucking Frazier. Okay. 
Jamie Frazier. Forever eternal book boyfriend. I will always love that man. Mm. Thank you, Diana Gabaldon, for creating perfection. Thank you. Number four, Caramel Apple Suckers. Best dang Halloween book ever. I'm assuming the person who created this really thinks Caramel Apple Suckers are the best Halloween candy. I beg to differ. Three Musketeers are mine for the win. Okay, so moving on. Uh, but the most, the best dang Halloween book ever um, is kind of like my answer. It depends on who you are as a person. And this is impossible for me because I have so many Halloween books, so many Halloween vibe books, so many spooky vibe books, so many fall vibe books. And also I've got books that just, they're just really fucking good books, but they're not centered around anything related to Halloween. They're just dark and creepy, but they're not Halloween related. So I don't have an answer for this. This is an impossible answer. It's an impossible answer. Um, but every Halloween book I have read I have enjoyed for some reason. And I've also picked it to pieces because that's what I do. Okay, that's what I do. So to give you at least a book rec for this, the last book that was Halloween related that I gave a very, very high score to was Spookily Yours by Jennifer Chipman. Looks like this. This is a small town, uh, witchy, cozy romance where our lead character, Willow, gets an animal companion who happens to be more than just the cat that she thought she was getting. He's a demon stuck in that form and then she releases him because she's a witch herself and then just cinnamon roll galore all over the place. Thank you. So this is the best Halloween book that I have read this year, but not ever because I just could not pick. I couldn't. Just like, I mean, honestly, Three Musketeers are my favorite candy. Um, but the Caramel Apple Suckers, they're, they're bomb, dude. They're bomb. Like, sometimes you just got to have one of those. Nothing beats it. Sometimes also nothing beats the Three Musketeers. Sometimes something also doesn't beat a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Sometimes something doesn't beat a Whatchamacallit or a Kit Kat. It just depends on your mood. I'm a very mood snack treat chick, okay? Don't judge me. I like candy and I like chocolate and I like this book. Great. Number five, vampires in everything. What is your least favorite Halloween trope? Zombies. I don't give a shit. I think zombies are stupid. I've never liked zombies. I don't even like zombie movies because why? Every zombie's slow and it's like this big, huge fucking chaos what? They can't open fucking doors. At least in normal canon, they can't. Now, there are these World War Z zombies, which can do some shit, but they're infected with a disease that's not really a zombie. Traditional zombies, I just don't fucking care. I just don't. Like, you're dead. Why would you want to fucking come back? I mean, seriously. Why? I, I just, I don't know, but I'll probably end up dying in the zombie apocalypse because I just don't give a shit about zombies. I'm gonna be that bitch be like, you know what? I don't feel like running. I just don't feel like running. This, Jackie doesn't run. And eventually I'm gonna run out of fucking ammo. So, yeah, zombies. I don't like zombies. I tend to not read a lot of books about zombies. However, there are a few books that I've seen that are about zombies that I do want to check out for for different reasons. And when I get to those books, um, I will let you know that I'm choosing this because of this reason, not because of zombies. Just so you know. Pumpkin everything. Because who doesn't like being basic? This bitch does. I love being a basic bitch. Pumpkin galore, okay? Um, what is your favorite Halloween trope? I love a talking animal companion. I fucking love them especially if it's a cat if it's a cat well there's two stars for you right there because I like cats I'm a cat person I grew up with cats 
I think they're fucking adorable because they're also the epitome of indifference. They choose you. If they don't choose you, they don't give a fuck. They, they just don't care. They could just be on their own and they choose to come and cuddle with you. And you are like, it's like a unicorn moment when they choke. And then the one, the one that doesn't like you chooses to snuggle up on you. It's like, oh, nobody talk, nobody move. I want to savor this forever. That's how much I love cats, okay? Not a crazy cat lady. That's my sister. Uh, because I rent. I can't have animals. But um, if I did, cats all the way. Want to know why? Because cats are awesome. And if I had a talking cat, best believe that cat would be a bitch. Straight up. Fuck this cup. And fuck you too. That's exactly what my cat would say. I don't like you. My mom doesn't like you. She talks about you behind your back. Go away. Or she actually loves you and you should probably stay. Come to think about it, I don't want a cat that talks because it would give away my secrets. Talking animal companion. Extra points if it's a cat. Number seven, evil incarnate, the most evil villain. Um, I've read a lot of villains. I tend to like the villains. Because I like the villains. I like them. I tend to root for them a lot. Half the time in books, I want the I want the person just to be the bad guy. I don't want them to be ever be a reason. Just be a fucking dick. To be a dick. At least then, you know, I don't have to feel bad about it. Um, for hating you. So for this, is he the most villainous character ever read? No. But does he have a reason to be evil? Like a genuine reason other than he just can? Well, I'm sure there's a reason for all the theorists out there. But truthfully, I don't really give a fuck for the reason because it's long gone. And that's Voldemort from the Harry Potter series. That dude is just straight evil. He is... Cut his body up into horcruxes. And he just does, he just does not care. He doesn't care. He doesn't care if you are loyal to him. He doesn't care if you dislike him. He just doesn't give a fuck. And that's a villain. He does not care about the consequences of what he does. Is there a reason for his villainy? Other than genetics? I don't care. Because he's that good. He's that good at being a villain. J.K. Rowling wrote a great fucking villain who is just evil to be fucking evil. And sometimes you just, you, they just, don't give me a reason, don't give me a reason to feel sorry for them. Don't give me any window that I could be like, oh my God, I feel so bad for you. No, because then I will start to like you. And I don't. I mean, I like the villains, but because you've given me reasons to like them. It's like the reason why Maleficent is my favorite Disney villain. Because she does not give a fuck. She went postal because she wasn't invited to a baby's fucking party. Okay? Just because she can. Like, that was the only reason. It was spite. It was petty. It was not worth half the shit she did. That was villainous to me. Some of the books I read were... The villain has, you know, had a be horrible backstory or it's actually like revenge clo cloaked in, you know, mystique or whatever. And I just, just be the bad guy, okay? Accept it. Own that shit. Voldemort does. That's why he uh, is the most villain, most evil, because he just straight up owns it. He doesn't give a fuck. So, like it. Number eight, Ouija board. Hmm. A book that messes with things that you don't want to be involved in. Uh, so funny story, Ouija boards are not allowed in my house. Not because I don't want them. It's because my husband refuses to have a house with a Ouija board. He thinks they're creepy. My mom does not allow Ouija boards in the house. So I've never actually owned a Ouija board. Um, everybody I tend to love doesn't want them around them, which is weird. Um, but okay. But as for a book that messes with something I don't want to be involved in. I'm not sure I found something I don't want to read about yet. I have not picked up a book 
that contained a subject material. Now I know that there are books out there. There are books out there that I'm gonna find one day and be like, nope, I have found a barrier. I have found something I'm not cool with. I have found something I don't wanna touch. But as of right now, I have not experienced that. I know there are things I don't feel comfortable with, like eye shit, things being done to people's eyes in horror films and books. I. It's a thing of mine. I don't like it, but I can deal with it. I have not come across something I'm like, nope, I'm not touching that with a 10 foot pole. Deuces, I'm out. Not happening. No, I have in my reading career, I've not experienced that. I don't think, honestly, I really don't think I found anything that bad that I couldn't get over after a while. So, um, I'm still open to Ouija boards. Just nobody else around me is. I guess I just haven't met the right Ouija board yet. Uh, number nine, full moon. What character do you turn into a full, turn into on a full moon? Um, I don't necessarily know because I'm already insane with or without the moon being full. So I don't really know. So I pick Sleeping Beauty because bitch likes to sleep and I like to sleep at night when the moon's full. When the moon's up, I like to be asleep. So I pick Sleeping Beauty. It's a fucking lame answer, but that's what I got because I, I don't really... I'm this way, rain, sun, shine, moon, no moon, all the time. Big bald crazy. With or without the moon shining on it. I, I don't really know how to help you with that one. So, uh, Sleeping Beauty, because bitch likes to sleep. Number 10, All Hallows Eve. The other world and this world have meshed for one night. What book world would you be love to be swept in? Um, again, there are so many worlds that I would love to join. Um, so many. I, I would love to go to Valaris. I would love to be there when no drama is going on. I would love to be in the world of Outlander. But have my modern day conveniences because I don't think I can live like that. I just don't. Um, I would love to enter the love letting world, but he scares me. And if you're watching me, you know who I'm talking about. Miller. He's out there. So, and I've got the exact color he wants. I don't know if I could be that scared and turned on at the same time 24-7. Okay. Just don't. So I picked a nice cozy area that I've recently read about that seems like it'd be a really nice place to visit. And that is Pleasant Grove from, again, Spookily Yours. Uh, this is a very nice, sweet town um, where witches live. And they have pumpkin everything and their fall festivals are like legit, okay? I've gone to fall festivals where they're just like little venues of shops and, you know, treats and stuff. No, this fall festival is like a fucking carnival with Ferris wheels and rides and pumpkin eating contests and caramel apple spice, pumpkin spice everywhere you fucking look. Apple bobbing contests. Like, it is fall on fucking steroids and, um... I want to be there. I want to wear the cute orange and black and tan and brown and have my hair look perfectly curled and coiffed and cute at all times with my little talking annual animal companion cat over here and drink my pumpkin spice to my life's content and nobody judge me for it. And the air smells like salted caramel at all times. That's what I want. So I choose that world because who wouldn't want to fucking live there? That or Bell, because I want that fucking library. Straight up, I want that library. I mean, what book reader doesn't want that library? Come on. 
All right, number 11, Voodoo Doll. What author would you love to take control of and make them write anything that you want? <laughs> There's only one author on the face of this planet that I would love to pull her puppet strings for just a day because I already know with her dark mind and my mind, oh, the things we could create the beautiful, dark, macabre, blood-drenched, romantic, pain-filled, mystical ravens that we could create. Oh, Christina. Except I would not keep you for just a day. You know I'd keep you forever. I would find some curse to tie us together more than we already tied together because... You're my bitch. I love you. I love you. And yes, if I could puppeteer you for one day, I would. Just so we could create even more epic shit than you have already created. One day. One day it'll happen. 12. Black Cat. What red flags do you look for when first starting out a book? Um, I don't know what red flags you're talking about. All I see is green and green means go. I don't have red flags. I don't have shit that I'm like, nope, not reading it. I, I don't. This series, the one I just, Christina Marziotis, okay? This is her love letting series. This is the first installment, Haunt. I picked up this book for two reasons. The cover, because hello, hello, okay? Lee, you know how I feel, okay? Mwah. Love you. I love you both, but seriously, cover, man. Gold. The second thing was the trigger page. The trigger page. Now, mind you, this looks like just a small page, but every single line has like probably four or five or six things in the sentence. There's a bunch of commas in here. They're not periods. They're fucking commas of shit, of triggers. I picked it up because of this. Because I wanted to see what she could do. Because I don't see red, goddammit. My husband might be colorblind and can't see red and green when they're together. But bitch, I'm not. Okay? I can see red. I can see green. I choose not to see red. Because why? Fuck it. I see red all the fucking time. I want to see green and I want to go. I just want to go. There's a thousand shades of green in this country and they all fucking mean go. <laughs> so let's go, baby. My green is red. My red is green. It all blends for me. So maybe I am colorblind. Maybe that's why I always freak my husband is colorblind because I am. That breathing you hear is my daughter. She's laughing hysterically right now. Trying hard not to. If you hear that breathing in the background, that's my daughter. Question 13. Which is brew? A book that had a lot of different components thrown in but the result was magical. I have a very hard time with this answer because there are so many books out there that have so many multiple components because I love books that make me delve in, dig in, rip apart, eviscerate, and just see all the different components to make it work. I hate taking actual things apart because I have to put them back together, but books? Man, you give me a book and I'm gonna rip that thing to shreds to figure out what makes that author tick, what makes those characters tick, what is in between those lines, what story's not being told but is actually supposed to be being told. I fucking love that shit. So I don't have one book for this. I have a couple books for this and I've already mentioned one of them. Haunt, so much shit. Magical realism, historical, gothic, romance, gore fucking crazy raven shit I still haven't figured out yet okay Rubik's Cube of literature right here okay Rubik's Cube swear to god I have the throne of glass series are you fucking kidding me are you fucking kidding me I can see the growth in Sarah J Mass as she's writing these books she started when she was 16 I can see the growth and maturity with her characters with her writing development and I love all the different new components that she's layered in but it still looks like the same fucking Sarah okay I mm, I love that shit 
okay? I, the Outlander, the series, how it grows and just morphs and changes with this time travel. One of the few time travel series I've ever seen actually nail the fucking shit, okay? Because time travel, we all know how fucking messed up that is. Now, granted, I don't read a lot of time travel, so people who read a lot of time travel, I, I understand there's probably ones out there that do it better, but I have not found them yet. Give me time and we'll have a conversation when I do, okay? But seriously, like I've got so many books that have all these different components because that's what I look for. If a book is flat and has like one or two dimensions, I'm usually bored, okay? I'm bored and I will try to tear some shit up. And if I can't, I will probably stop it, okay? I don't DNF books very often because I dig and I rip apart because I love all the multiple components. So I don't have a book solely for this question because all books for me are magical. They all take me away. They all give me escape. They all make me feel something that I didn't. They all put a spell on me. That's the coolest part about reading for me is it's all magic. All right, it is, straight up. I, I don't know any other way to put that. But those are my answers to my spooky book tag. I hope you guys enjoyed this little window into my spooky little brain and world. And I hope you guys have a safe and happy Halloween. And if you guys like to do this tag, feel free to do it. Just let me know, tag me in it so I know that you did it and I will go watch it because I love to get to know you better. And I hope you got to know me better with this as well. So until next time, stay spooky and happy Halloween.